Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, February 13th, 2013. Our top story comes from the world of neuroscience. Researchers from John Hopkins have been studying mouse models of strokes and have made some interesting discoveries. Although medication and rehabilitation for stroke victims is always getting better, there is significant room for improvement. So, to study the effects a stroke had on motor functions, the researchers first trained mice in a task. That is, reaching and grasping for a precariously perched pellet of food while they were hungry. After seven to nine days, the mice mastered the skill and a stroke was induced, specifically to the primary motor cortex, a brain region which unsurprisingly primarily controls motor functions. Also unsurprisingly, the mice's grasping ability went way downhill. But the researchers began quickly retraining the mice, and the mice were actually able to regain that functionality despite permanent damage to the motor cortex. Examining the brain showed that a different region called the medial premotor cortex seemed to have taken over the control of grasping. Inducing strokes in the premotor region for a new set of trained mice had no effect on grasping demonstrating that the first group had their brain rewired as a result of the post-stroke training. The retraining also seems to reduce the number or activity of inhibitory neurons in the medial premotor cortex, which may have assisted in the rewiring. All of this research showed an incredible plasticity of the brain after stroke. A second induced stroke to the premotor region still resulted in the mice being able to regain functionality. This suggests that quicker, more intense rehabilitation may help human stroke patients, and research will continue examining how recovery in the mice is affected by timing and pharmaceuticals. Next is news from the world of evolution. Usually when we discuss evolution, we mean the adaptation of plants, animals, and other organisms over generations. But this time, it's been applied on a purely biochemical level, as a team from the University of Minnesota have made an enzyme from scratch. Now this isn't entirely new. Industry has been tweaking naturally occurring enzymes to better fit their processes for a long time. Still, other groups are constructing fully artificial enzymes, but using rational design, taking our current knowledge of proteins and simulations to design a final enzyme product. What's different about the Minnesota enzyme is that it was completely formed through a process of directed evolution, putting just a chain of amino acids through successive generations of mutations and selection. The group selected four and eventually produced an RNA ligase enzyme that was effective at its job of linking two strands of RNA. However, it looked very different from natural RNA ligase and even any natural protein. Most proteins are rigid structures made from preliminary structures like alpha helices and beta sheets, whereas the artificial enzyme was a more flexible structure round around two metal ions. This demonstrated the advantage of directed evolution from essentially nothing, as it opened up possibilities not found in nature. After successfully characterizing the new RNA ligase, the possibilities for other enzymes opened up unlocking both functional and practical biomolecules and helping us better understand the protein dynamics and evolution. We end with an update from the world of physics. We don't cover physics news very much because outside of quantum mechanics and particle physics, there isn't much going on. But one of our favorite topics for news is fusion power. An international team led by Purdue has been studying the effects of lithium on plasma containment. You see, the nuclear fusion of atoms takes an incredible amount of pressure and heat. The sun and other stars accomplish this through their incredible mass and the force of gravity. For artificial fusion, we need to trap an extremely hot plasma inside a strong magnetic field. And one of the issues with scaling up a reactor like this is the materials, particularly the material that actually needs to line the reaction chamber and withstand interactions with the fusion plasma. Previous research has shown that thin coatings of lithium can greatly influence the plasma. Now further study, both with simulations and actual plasma experiments, confirm the effectiveness of a graphite material with a very thin layer of lithium deposition. Improving hydrogen recycling, which is essential for the fusion, as well as energy containment. This seems to relate to the lithium bringing oxygen to the surface of the reactor chamber, which the deuterium in the plasma selectively binds to. Obviously, more research is needed, 
but this finding will hopefully assist in the creation of an effective fusion power source. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.